Have you ever wondered how nations navigate the complexities of hosting foreign military bases on their soil? Well, let's unravel that together. At the heart of these arrangements are what we call Status of Forces Agreements, or SOFAs. These are essentially legal frameworks that govern the presence of U.S. military personnel in foreign countries. Intriguing, isn't it? SOFAs are designed to elucidate the rights, responsibilities, and protections of U.S. military personnel stationed abroad. They help to demystify the legal landscape that often becomes murky when military forces cross borders. From jurisdictional issues to customs regulations, SOFAs cover a broad spectrum. But what does this mean for the host countries? Well, the implications can be far-reaching. These agreements can shape the host nation's sovereignty, its security landscape, and even its political dynamics. Indeed, the impact of these agreements can be profound, particularly when we turn our gaze towards Africa. To understand the impact of SOFAs on Africa, it's essential to go back to the beginning, to the inception of the first U.S. military base on the continent. The journey takes us back to the years following World War II, a time when the world was rapidly changing and the United States was securing its position as a global superpower. The African continent, with its strategic location and wealth of resources, was a tantalizing prospect for the U.S. military. The first base was established in Morocco in the early 1950s, known as Nouassour Air Base. This base was a crucial component of the United States Cold War strategy, serving as a launch pad for U.S. military operations throughout the region. The establishment of Nouassour and the bases that followed was made possible through Status of Forces Agreements, or SOFAs. These agreements, negotiated between the U.S. and host countries, outlined the rights and responsibilities of U.S. military personnel stationed abroad. They were essential tools in extending the reach of U.S. military power, while also protecting U.S. service members from local jurisdiction. The motivations behind these moves were multifaceted. On one hand, the U.S. sought to protect its national security interests, maintain global dominance, and deter the influence of the Soviet Union. On the other hand, these bases also served as a means to foster diplomatic relations and economic ties with African nations. However, these agreements were not without controversy. Critics argued that they infringed upon the sovereignty of host nations and often favored the interests of the U.S. over those of the local populations. Despite these concerns, the U.S. continued to expand its military presence across the continent throughout the latter half of the 20th century. And thus, the stage was set for a long-lasting and complex relationship between the U.S. military and the continent of Africa. With a foothold on the continent, the U.S. military's presence in Africa began to grow. But what has been the impact of this expansion? The effects of U.S. military bases on Africa are multifold, with some leaving a heavier footprint than others. One adverse consequence often overlooked is environmental degradation. Military bases by their very nature are heavy consumers of resources and producers of waste. In Africa, where environmental regulations may not be as stringent or well-enforced, the impact can be even more detrimental. For instance, in Djibouti, home to the only permanent U.S. military base on the continent, there have been reports of waste mismanagement and pollution, leading to soil and water contamination. But the fallout extends beyond just the environment. The establishment of these bases can also lead to social disruption. The influx of foreign military personnel can strain local infrastructure, lead to increased costs of living and even cause cultural clashes. In some cases, the presence of U.S. military personnel has been linked to an increase in crime rates and social inequality. Perhaps the most potent impact, however, is the potential breach of sovereignty. While the U.S. enters into status of forces agreements, or SOFAs, with host countries to govern the conduct of their military personnel, these agreements can often tip the scale in favor of the U.S. In essence, they could shield U.S. personnel from local laws, creating a sense of impunity and fostering resentment among the local population. Let's delve into some specific instances to illustrate these points. In the early 2000s, a U.S. military base in Kenya was hit with allegations of toxic waste dumping, causing considerable harm to the local environment and people's health. Despite protests and demands for accountability, the issue was largely swept under the rug, highlighting a clear instance of sovereignty breach. In another instance, the establishment of Camp Lemonnier in Djibouti has led to significant social disruption. The presence of thousands of foreign soldiers has inflated the local economy, causing a spike in the cost of living that has made life increasingly difficult for many Djiboutians. Meanwhile, the base has done little to reduce unemployment or improve living conditions for the local population. 
These are but a few examples of the negative impacts of U.S. military bases on Africa. It's important to note that these bases can also bring benefits, such as increased security and economic investment. However, these advantages often come at a high price, and it's crucial to question whether they outweigh the costs. In conclusion, the expansion of U.S. military bases in Africa has left a significant impact on the continent. While the U.S. may argue that these bases are necessary for maintaining global security, the environmental degradation, social disruption, and potential breaches of sovereignty they cause cannot be overlooked. The footprint of U.S. military bases has left indelible marks on the African landscape and its people. The U.S. foreign policy has played a significant role in shaping the SOFAs and the establishment of military bases. But how exactly? Well, let's take a trip back in time. During the Cold War, the U.S. foreign policy was driven by a strategic need to counteract Soviet influence. Africa, rich in resources and strategically located, became a significant chessboard for this geopolitical contest. The United States sought to establish military bases under the guise of Status of Forces Agreements or SOFAs to secure its influence and protect its interests. These agreements allowed the U.S. to station military personnel and equipment in various African countries. In return, these nations received financial aid, military assistance, and promises of security. This was a classic example of the realist approach in foreign policy, where national interest was prioritized above all else. Fast forward to the post-9-11 period, the focus of U.S. foreign policy shifted towards counterterrorism. Africa, with its vast ungoverned spaces and fragile states, was perceived as a breeding ground for terrorism. Thus, the United States saw an imperative need to expand its military presence in the region. This led to the creation of the United States Africa Command, or AFRICOM, in 2007. Under the banner of AFRICOM, the U.S. has negotiated more SOFAs, leading to an increase in its military footprint across the continent. These agreements have often been controversial, with critics arguing that they undermine national sovereignty and have negative socioeconomic impacts. However, from the perspective of U.S. foreign policy, these agreements have been seen as necessary tools to protect American interests and maintain global security. The negotiation of SOFAs and the establishment of military bases have been guided by the U.S.'s strategic objectives, whether countering Soviet influence during the Cold War or combating terrorism in the post-9-11 era. U.S. foreign policy has been a driving force behind the proliferation of SOFAs and military bases in Africa, the story of SOFAs and U.S. military bases in Africa is one of complexity and consequence. A tale that unravels layers of historical context, geopolitical strategies and their subsequent ramifications. We've journeyed through the inception of U.S. military bases in Africa, a strategic move that was born out of the Cold War era and has since evolved in response to shifting global threats. These bases, while serving as a testament to U.S. military prowess, have also become a focal point of controversy and debate. We've delved into the impact of these bases on Africa, a continent that has often found itself at the intersection of foreign interests. The presence of these military installations has not been without consequences. From the socioeconomic disruptions to the political implications, and even the environmental toll, the footprint of these bases is far-reaching, shaping the African landscape in ways that are profound and lasting. We've also explored the role of U.S. foreign policy in shaping status of forces agreements. These policies, often crafted in the corridors of power in Washington, D.C., have far-reaching implications, determining the rules of engagement between the U.S. military and the host nations. They have often been met with criticism for favoring U.S. interests, raising questions about sovereignty, accountability, and justice. As we conclude, it's important to reflect on these issues. The story of SOFAs and U.S. military bases in Africa is not just a historical narrative, but a continuing saga that is shaping the future of the continent. It's a story that compels us to question, to analyze, and most importantly, to reflect. These reflections are not just about understanding the past, but about contemplating the future. The future of SOFAs, the future of U.S. military presence in Africa, and indeed, the future of Africa itself. The implications of these issues extend beyond the borders of the continent, prompting us to ponder on a global scale. As we consider the future of SOFAs and U.S. military presence in Africa, we must ask ourselves, what kind of world do we want to build? If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.